So I'm back from Japan and I bought some components while I was there. So I went to the, in fact, I'll show you, I'll zoom in a little bit. I went to the Tokyo radio department store and I picked up a few components while I was there. So uh, lots of different LEDs. I say different, actually, they're all the same package and uh, a super capacitor. I've already got one, but while I was there, I had to buy something and some of these unique LEDs. So let's take a look at these ones, shall we? And we'll save the others for another day. So I bought three LEDs from this particular seller in the market. I don't have video of that, unfortunately. Um, he was eating his lunch, so I didn't want to put the camera on him, but I did buy some LEDs. So we've got one here that he tells me is a yellow LED and it's got this interesting color to it on the outside on the, uh, what is it, like an epoxy package? Um, do you know what? Let's get them out of this little bag, shall we? So we've got two that are exactly the same. And this one, oh, try and get them in shot, which is a really interesting color. Um, and he tells me it's yellow, so we can test that one straight away. Um, the other ones we're gonna have to look at in a bit more detail. There's our lovely yellow LED, now bright, lighting quite brightly. Let's see what um, value this resistor is. I've got this uh, resistor color code chart thing. We're gonna try and do that. Let's have a look. It's a 100 ohm resistor. They're in a, um, a TO package, so a transistor outline package. Um, you can see it's got three leads, just like a transistor would. Um, I don't know what they're, I mean, I don't know what these are. There's no marking on them, uh, no part number, so I haven't been able to get a data sheet or anything. Um, he tells me they're red LEDs, so let's have a really, really close look, shall we? That is about as close as I can get. In fact, what I'll do is I'll take a picture and then zoom in so that you can see it in more detail. But you can see, I mean, I can see from just from looking in the monitor and in, with my naked eye that you've got those two black connections with gold. They look like they're insulated. That black stuff probably is an insulation that goes straight down. In fact, if we look at the bottom of that LED, you can see some like epoxy there and their bond wires going from those two gold legs to whatever the devil that uh, diode is. And then at the top here, we have another connection which is going to another one of these legs. So that's probably the ground, I would imagine. And the bond wires here are carrying the current. So um, shall we try and light it up? Right, so I've got it in a breadboard. Um, I've separated out the pins so that I'm not using the, I'm not putting them all together, um, the two black ones, because I'm not quite sure how this works. Um, so we're going to connect the two black ones to the positive. So I'm just going to stick a 470 ohm resistor in there. And I will also connect that pin because I don't, we're just going to experiment. There's no data sheet for it, so we'll just try this out. And then uh, the other side's going to go to ground. And oh, I'll tell you what, this uh, resistor could just go straight into the power rail. Uh, let's turn on the power supply. Ground. Positive. We're on 5 volts. I've limited it to 3 amps, so not limited at all and drawing no current and nothing to see here. Uh, nope. Let's try switching this around, shall we? Oh, there we are. So it's quite a dip. Let me turn the lights off so you can have a little closer look. It's fairly dim. It's drawing four milliamps. Shall I switch it out for a 100 ohm resistor? That's a bit brighter, but it's still drawing, well, it's drawing 26 milliamps. Okay. So what's this other pin? Let's um, put the easier going resistor in. Um, so we've got two black pins here, both have bond wires going through them. This is interesting. Let's try 
What if I connect that one to negative? It turns the LED off, but it's still drawing five milliamps. So does this bypass, is it like a bypass pin? So if you have a look, you'll be able to almost see what I'm doing here. Uh, so you've got these two black things, <laughs> really good description here. These two pins um, both have bond wires. I'm gonna have to look at that picture in better detail um, on the computer, but I'll put it up on screen now so you can have a look. And then um, we've got what I thought was the ground pin. This far one is actually going to power um, so yeah, I don't think I know what's going on here or why that is inhibiting it. Um, let's try putting that in and then going to the positive rail. Well, that does nothing. Interesting. What happens if we try and power it from there? No. Okay. Um, it's a nice looking LED though, isn't it? Really, really retro looking. So I would have thought, so just grounding it turns it off. If anyone's got any info on this kind of LED or I've seen it, used it before, then I'd be really interested to find out. Let's come in a little bit closer and see if we can't get some more detail. Hang on a sec. Right, this is about as close in as I can get. So let's, um, let's turn it back on. Yeah, I really can't see the, the construction here or, or what's going on when I turn it on and off. Even if, I mean, if that's what I'm even doing. <laughs> I don't know. So it doesn't work with just this one in. It has to have this one connected. Strange. What if I connect that one to ground and this one to positive? Nothing, still drawing five milliamps even when it's off. Actually it draws slightly more current when it's in its off state Yeah, so it draws five milliamps in the off state with this pin grounded, and then it draws three milliamps um, with that pin removed. So I don't know, but it's an interesting looking LED, isn't it? Um, I don't really know what it's designed for, but I did a bit of Googling, uh, as you do. And these uh, TO46 type packages, I can't be absolutely sure that's what it is, because actually it's not quite as tall as a TO46, um, but it is certainly the right diameter um, and it certainly has the right ring diameter as well, within a certain level of tolerance, I imagine. Um, but it could be uh, for sort of fiber optic stuff maybe, or it could be just a really old kind of diode that's not really used anymore. But it's an interesting one. Yeah, they're pretty cool, aren't they? I have no idea. They'd make really cool robot eyes. Well, if anyone's got any info on what these are, there's no, there's no part number. There's nothing like that on them. So it would be good to know if someone's used them or seen them before, know what their applications are really uh, for. I'd love to hear from you. All right, I'll speak to you all again soon.